Hey everyone, it's been over two minutes and I haven't been raped yet, but after some investigation this week, I'm terrified of Oklahoma City. Hi, I'm Diana Davison. I'm on a mission to expose corruption in the legal system, stop wrongful convictions, and shine a light on the very real problem of false allegations of sexual assault. Now, two cases of wrongful conviction that I've been researching happened to collide this last week. They have an interesting connection, which is starting to read a bit like a John Grisham novel. The cases are former officer Daniel Holtzclaw, sentenced to 263 years in prison, and Richard Glossop, who's sitting on death row and has narrowly avoided execution three times. The connection is David Prater, the Oklahoma County DA who has a fascinating connection to one of the biggest scandals in the so-called U.S. justice system. Let me give you a rundown of the characters. We start with Cowboy Bob Macy. Macy was kind of like the Colonel Sanders of death. He fashioned himself a modern-day John Wayne and prided himself on his high rate of death penalty convictions. He also had an incredibly high rate of prosecutorial misconduct, leading to a number of cases being overturned in appeal. Macy embraced his macho image, the silver-haired prosecutor looked like he jumped off the reel of an old western film, earning the nickname Cowboy Bob for his signature getup. Wide-brimmed cowboy hat, black string tie, and slick cowboy boots. Born in 1930 to his mother Ethel and his father Harold, an Indianapolis truck driver dubbed Red for his hot temper, Macy grew up poor. During cold spells, his family's only source of heat was a potbelly stove. A former Oklahoma City police officer, Macy roped calves and hung a poster of the popular Western movie Tombstone in his office. According to local lore, he was once dragged from court after pulling out a gun on the jury, full cowboy style. Next is Black Magic. That's the nickname for disgraced forensics expert Joyce Gilchrist. The magic Gilchrist performed was to produce results that matched scientific evidence to the person a DA or police officer wanted to convict, when in fact it did not match. Macy was a big fan of black magic, and she helped him to secure more than 20 death penalty sentences, as well as many others. In the case of Curtis McCarty, who's since been exonerated, in 1986 he was convicted and sentenced to death. Only after the Gilchrist scandal erupted was it discovered that the chemist went back and revised her original handwritten notes to implicate McCarty, and that the hairs she had used for testing had somehow mysteriously disappeared. Gilchrist's misconduct in the laboratory eventually led to her demise, but she would spend two decades working in the police department before her work was seriously scrutinized. By the time Black Magic's fraudulence was finally exposed, she'd left an indelible mark on Oklahoma County. As Brady Henderson from ACLU Oklahoma says, Gilchrist's knack for securing forensic matches made her extremely valuable to Macy's office. She could seem to provide a conclusive match where somebody else looking at the same stuff later would say, this is inconclusive, I can't figure it out, explained Henderson. And that's why her name was literally black magic in the office. If it was magic, that means it wasn't science, and that should have been the first red flag. David Prater, the current DA, has always stood by Cowboy Bob. Prater was an assistant DA to Macy and learned all the tricks of the trade from him. Macy retired in 2001 amidst the scandal and investigation in their office, and Prater eventually took over the reins. But has anything changed? Prater recently had two witnesses arrested within 24 hours of them submitting affidavits that support death row inmate Richard Glossop's innocence, Joseph Tapley and Michael Scott. Scott was issued an arrest warrant on Tuesday for an unpaid $200 fine and not completing community service. Scott was arrested in Rogers County by police officers with their service weapons drawn and pointed at him. Documents show, while still in handcuffs, Scott was placed in a chair in the interrogation room, and moments later, David Prater and an investigator with the last name of Eastbrook then entered the room and began interrogating Mr. Scott. Documents show they allegedly asked Scott about an affidavit he signed regarding Glossop's case. Well, the district attorney simply stated this. 
As part of the investigation into new evidence in the Glossop case, our office has been trying to talk with any new witnesses who have come forward. They are in violation of their probation. David Prater, in charge of all prosecutions in Oklahoma County, oversaw the trial and conviction of Daniel Holtzclaw as well. Let me show you David Prater's personality type from a quote explaining his vicious campaign to win the position of DA from West Lane back in 2006. The acrimonious tone of the campaign was my fault, Prater said. I felt wronged, and I wanted to do anything I could to not only get elected, but also take him down, and hurt the man who hurt me. Well, Prater was hurt because Lane had fired him from the DA's office on an ethical concern but they've since made up and become best buddies again. But Prater, four years ago, said he'd realized he'd forgiven his friend when he learned through the Oklahoma City Police Department that a newly released prisoner made death threats on them and the late DA Bob Macy. No one had yet alerted Wes to the threats, and I realized how angry I was. Not at Wes, but at the man out of prison, Prater said. He called Lane, and it led to a full reconciliation, he said. That day... Love overcame hate, he said. Well, makes you wonder what kind of bonds are formed when DAs work in a corrupt office, violating ethical codes together and obtaining wrongful convictions together. Who was this prisoner who wanted to kill them? There could be a very good reason he wants them dead. Well, Cowboy Bob did die in 2011, and his son said Bob suffered from dementia at the end. Macy denied that he'd ever acted unethically and usually dismissed criticism as coming from death penalty foes. Macy resigned in 2001 for health reasons. He has suffered for years from dementia, said his son, Brett Macy. It must be really difficult dealing with the knowledge that your lies have ended many innocent lives. Macy's misdeeds are well known. In 2002, an appellate judge said the following, Macy's persistent misconduct has without doubt harmed the reputation of Oklahoma's criminal justice system and left the unenviable legacy of an indelibly tarnished legal career. But finding people who know how deep the corruption runs can be a bit difficult. Macy passed away in 2011, but he remains a controversial figure with a powerful legacy. Few Oklahoma-based defense attorneys interviewed for this story were willing to talk about the cowboy prosecutor on the record. One defense attorney who handles cases in Oklahoma County declined to comment, explaining that comments about Macy could be construed as attacks against the current district attorney, David Prater, who worked as an assistant DA in Macy's office. And David Prater is not a man you want to piss off. People who cross his path end up fired or in prison. I know there are lawyers, judges, and police officers who know what's going down in Oklahoma City. Daniel Holtzclaw and Richard Glossop are not the only wrongful convictions in Oklahoma procured through prosecutorial misconduct, but it's time to start talking. Remember, we're dealing with a guy who will actually have defense witnesses arrested. In Daniel Holtzclaw's trial, David Prater told the judge that nothing could be done to get rid of the protesters who were threatening jurors and taking their photos. Well, why would he do that? Also, Why did the judge listen? The investigation is centered around D.A. David Prater. Because there's absolutely zero truth to all the rumors that have been out there. So that was Scott Adams defending David Prater against ethics accusations. The same Scott Adams, who happens to have been Daniel's defense lawyer, and is currently described in Daniel's appeal as having been grossly ineffective, failing to even call their own DNA expert. So Daniel Holtzclaw is in prison for 263 years right now, based on reverse-engineered accusations. Richard Glossop is about to join the ranks of the wrongfully executed, based on nothing but the testimony of the actual killer, coerced into saying that Glossop paid him to do it. These are cases that should never have seen the inside of a courtroom. What is going on in Oklahoma? Black magic is apparently still at work in Oklahoma County's district attorney's office. Joyce Gilchrist, cowboy Bob Macy, well, they may be dead and gone, but the culture of corruption carries on. David Prater, Macy's protege and apostle, is literally getting away with murder, and I plan on stopping him. 
but I'm going to need your help. There are people out there, police officers, lawyers, judges. Be on the right side of history. It's never too late to tell the truth. It's never too late to free the wrongfully convicted. It's never too late to put justice back into the justice system.